This video is a continuation from the OpenSSH installation video. In this video, we are going to create a new user on the server, give the new user access to sudo privileges upon using the word sudo. We will then create a custom or a personalized SSH key for this user, which we will then transfer to the server and then make it so that when this user logs in, they will only need to log in using SSH and no password will be required. So go ahead, follow along with me. We're going to start the server up, we're going to minimize the window to the server, and then we're going to log in using our initially first created user. For me, that's the Lubuntu creator or Lubuntu user. We'll log into the server on that end and then continue from there. So I'm going to be using my iTerm2 command console or terminal. If you're on Windows, you'll likely use PowerShell or the command line. For the rest of us, we're using a terminal environment. Next, we're going to create our user. Just so you're not confused, for my password, I use the same thing like I did Lubuntu, just standard user one, the number one. For all this other information, I just clicked enter. I didn't care about it, I'm ignoring it, and then Y to confirm it. Next, what we're gonna do is we're going to add our user to the sudo group, so they have the ability to run sudo commands. Next, let's go ahead and switch to our user to prove that the user actually exists. So if we type sue and then the username, provided by the user password, and if you notice on the left here, instead of saying Lubuntu now, it now says standard user. Now, before we create our new SSH key on our local development environment, and then take that and upload it back up to the server. First, what we are going to do is we're going to make a copy of a file called sshdconfig. Um, we're going to do this. We're going to then check to see if we have pub key authentication enabled to yes. If we do, then we will also do a sudo systemctl restart of that service. So go ahead, just follow along. It's not necessary. Likely everything is already perfectly set up for you, but it's still a good idea to make a copy of this file.
everything looks good. Now, go ahead and open up a new terminal window. So for iTerm, I'm going to click on Shell, New Window. Now we're on our local machine. We need to change our directory to the .ssh directory. Sometimes um, you will not have this directory if you've never used SSH before, so you'll have to do the mkdir space .ssh to create that directory. Otherwise, go ahead and follow along with me um, after you create the directory. That is, if it doesn't exist. Next, go ahead and type the following command, which will allow us to generate a new keygen. Provide a pass phrase, um, not necessarily needed in a test environment, but it's a good habit to get into. You can make a weak one, you can make a strong one, just something that you personally will remember. I forgot to note, make sure you give the SSH key an actual name if you don't and it gives you the default name. If you make more than two or three, you'll probably get confused as to what it is referencing to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy the public key to the server. So if we go ahead and we list ls, we notice that we now have the Ubuntu, the name of what we called it, Ubuntu 16 LTS server.pub. That's the public one, and then here's the private one that we want to keep locally. So go ahead and type the following commands along with me. This will take a copy, upload it to the server, and it likely will prompt you the first time for a password so that you can connect and make a copy up there. And then once that's done, we will follow it up with um, a similar command, but the second time it should not prompt you for a password.
Perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. Notice that the second time it did not prompt us for a password. So now we can log in without a password.